explosive, entertaining, electrifying. He was a seven-time NHL All-Star, two-time Rock Richard Trophy recipient, and was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. A Calder Trophy winner, he's enticed fans from the moment they laid eyes on him. A player who scored back-to-back 60-goal -back seasons, as well as a five-goal game in the Olympic semifinals. Standing 5 foot 10, 191 pounds, number 10, the Russian rocket, Pavel Bure. Pavel Bure was born in Moscow on March 31, 1971. Dad Vladimir was a swimming legend for the Soviet Union, winning four Olympic medals. And it was clear at a young age that Bure had inherited Dad's athletic prowess. Although he was groomed to follow in Dad's footsteps as a swimmer, it was hockey that Bure desired to play. At the age of six, he tried out for the CSKA Moscow Hockey School, but was not very successful as he hadn't skated before. Dad gave him an ultimatum, stating that he would withdraw him from the hockey school if he didn't improve within a couple of months. And that was the push Bure needed, as he not only showed drastic improvement, but he also went on to become the best forward in his hockey league by the time he was 11. As he continued his upward trajectory, Bure was drafted into the Central Red Army's junior team at the age of 14. In the following year of 1986, destiny brought Bure to Canada, as his Soviet national midget team played in a series of exhibition games. Little did he know at the time, the game played at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver would end up being his future home. By the time Bure was 16, he was playing professionally for CSK in Moscow. In the 88-89 season, he broke the scoring record for rookies with 17 goals playing with Sergei Fedorov and Alexander Mulgilny as his line mates. As they ended up departing for the NHL, Bure continued to dominate as he saw out his contract with the team. Bure's selection in the 1989 NHL entry draft was clouded with controversy, as teams thought he was ineligible to be selected that year. In order to qualify, Bure had to have played at least 11 games for CSKA Moscow, but he only had five games on record. Many teams were interested, but it was the Vancouver Canucks who did their homework and were able to prove his eligibility, showing records of exhibition and international games, which pushed him over 11 games. As a result, Pavel Bure was selected by the Vancouver Canucks with the 113th pick in the sixth round. Although Bure was intent on playing in the NHL, his arrival did not get the blessing of the Soviet Ice Hockey Federation, and the Canucks had to settle the matter in court, ultimately having to pay a quarter of a million dollars in order to pry Bure away from the Soviet Union. Bure's arrival in the NHL instantly captured the attention of fans. Instantly dubbed the Russian rocket, Bure had a mixture of speed and control that made him one of the best offensive weapons in the NHL. He was explosive, as defensemen were left on their heels trying to contain him. He was entertaining, teasing the crowd with the many tricks up his sleeve, and he was electrifying, often beating a player one-on-one -on -one or splitting the D as if they're just bystanders. Most importantly, there wasn't a player who was as hungry as Bure was to score goals. In an era when there was plenty of clutching and grabbing, he still managed to break free. Once he had a step on a player, there was really no hope of catching him. Bure's defensive awareness was also quite palatable, as he was relied upon to play on the penalty kill, both providing an active stick to take away passing lanes, as well as an offensive threat going the other way. Bure went on to win the Calder Trophy as the top rookie in 1992, as he registered 34 goals and 60 points in 65 games. He was practically unplayable in the second half of the season as he scored 22 goals in the final 23 games to lead the team into the playoffs. Facing elimination in Game 6 of the opening round, Bure broke out with a hat-trick against the Winnipeg Jets to force a Game 7. The Canucks would go on to advance to the next round but would get knocked out by the Edmonton Oilers. Bure's second and third seasons saw him reach 60 goals and 100 points in consecutive seasons but it was the 93-94 season in which Bure sparkled ever so brightly. With Gino Ojekt and Murray Craven as his linemates, Bure exploded for 49 goals in the final 51 games to carry a Canucks team that was one game above 500 into the playoffs. His round one game seven overtime goal against the Calgary Flames 
is still considered to be one of the Canucks' most significant goals in franchise history. In the second round against the Dallas Stars, Bure again determined the outcome of the series with a mind-boggling six goals in five games. In Game 2 of the series in particular, Bure was able to stamp his authority on the game. Being roughed up every time he stepped onto the ice by Shane Shirla, Bure had finally had enough. And even though the Canucks had enforcers of their own to deal with the problem, he took matters into his own hands in what was termed the mother of elbows. What was undoubtedly a cheap shot, it was about the message that was sent to the rest of the league. If you're going to play Pavel Bure hard, Pavel Bure is going to play you hard. Bure was again instrumental as the Canucks defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs, but ultimately came up short in Game 7 versus the New York Rangers. It was only Bury's third season in the NHL, but little did he know at the time, the chance to play in the Stanley Cup Finals never came again. Bury's next few seasons were troubled with injuries, as he would suffer knee and neck injuries that would put him in the press box for healthy portions of the 95-96 and 96-97 seasons. It was around this time Bury had changed his number from 10 to 96, as he wanted to commemorate the day he came to North America, September 6, 1991. Due to the horrific couple of years with injury and ultimately knee surgery, Bure decided not to tempt fate, choosing to don the number 10 once again. In the 1998 Winter Olympics in Nagano, Russia was one of the favorites to win it all, and leading the team as captain was Pavel Bure. During the semi-finals, Bure single-handedly beat the Finns as he notched five goals in the game. As fate would have it though, he would get shut out by a defense-first Czech Republic team in the gold medal game. Bure's nine goals in six games won him the best forward award. Back in North America as the 97-98 season came to a close, Bure decided his time with the Vancouver Canucks was over, even though he had one more year left on his contract. He would cite personal reasons for his decision, but he would later reveal that he had been at odds with the Canucks management for years. Bury was eventually traded to the Florida Panthers, as the Canucks lost their most prolific goal scorer in team history. Bury spent the next three seasons with the Panthers, recording 58 goals in the 1999-2000 season, which won him the Rocket Richard Trophy, given to the top goal scorer. He also led the team into the playoffs, where they got swept in four games by eventual champions New Jersey Devils. This would mark Bure's final appearance in the playoffs. The following season proved to be his penultimate season with the Panthers, as he registered 59 goals winning him a second straight Rock Richard Trophy. In Bure's final season with the Panthers in 01-02, he continued to be hampered by injuries, this time his groin and was traded to the New York Rangers before the trade deadline of 2002. Even though he continued to post good numbers with the Rangers, his injuries, especially his knees, have caught up to him and he couldn't return to his former glory. After a couple of knee surgeries that kept him sidelined for the full season of 03-04, coupled by the lockout of 04-05, Burry confirmed his retirement on November 1, 2005. Bure was limited to only 702 career NHL games, but still managed to score 437 goals, 342 assists, and 779 points. He will be remembered for his ability to score at will. Give him an inch and he'll take a mile, and he only needed a bit of room to perform something special. To be able to regularly victimize Hall of Fame defensemen in his highlight reels only goes to show how brilliant and unstoppable he was. Bure was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame with the class of 2012, his sixth year of eligibility. He would also have his number 10 retired by the Vancouver Canucks in 2013 for the impact he made during his stay there. Post-retirement, Bure moved back to Russia and had a stint as Team Russia's general manager, assembling the team that competed in the 2006 Winter Olympics in Turin. After taking several years off, he returned to the hockey world in 2010 to create, manage, and play in the World Legends Hockey League, which is geared towards retired professional hockey players across Europe. Pavel Bure was one of the most exhilarating players to grace the ice, but some fans try to discredit him, saying he's never won the Stanley Cup. But Bure played for some awful teams over the years. Looking back at Cup
Cup winning teams in the 90s, he could fit in any of those lineups and still be a top line player. Burray remained vocal after retirement with how the Canucks management mistreated him during his days in Vancouver. According to Burray, someone in the Canucks office planted a rumor that he threatened to withdraw from the 94 playoffs unless they gave him a better contract. That certainly created a rift between management and the player, and it is with this that I'd like us to learn a lesson from Pavel Burray. Without character, there is no credibility, and without credibility there is no trust. Building positive relationships requires trust, and it doesn't usually come overnight. You have to work on it little by little, but once you lose it, you may never get it back. Bure lost faith in Canucks management, and to this day, the relationship has never been the same. Nobody likes to be manipulated, and nobody wants to be in the dark. If you value someone, always be genuine, and don't lie to them. If you can grasp the essence of that idea, you'll be able to build and maintain secure relationships for the rest of your life. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to support the channel, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.